Good afternoon, everyone. It is now time to talk about Fuji in our Project 2020 Artist Series. We're going to take his first 10 cards in Project 2020, rank them 10 all the way to 1. So let's get to all that and more right now. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris, otherwise known as at CRT underscore sports cards on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to continue the conversation, we have a Facebook group, just search up CRT Sports Cards. And also, if you want to stay informed around Project 2020, hit that subscribe button because I deliver you a video two times a week around the happenings of the cards that get released during the week. And then we're also doing this companion series right now where I break down the first 10 cards of every artist. But let's now talk about Fuji. This is all about Fuji. And look, you could be Fuji, I could be Fuji, nobody knows who Fuji is other than maybe Tops and Fuji himself. Fuji has, for the most part, been anonymous. That is his mission and that is why his cards have no faces. And because he does not include faces and because he wants to be anonymous is why when you talk to fans around Project 2020, it is a very polarizing result. Either people really like him or people really don't like Fuji. For me personally, as a collector of Project 2020, he's sort of in that middle ground. He's not in my top five. He's definitely not in my bottom five. He kind of lives right in that gray middle area where there are some cards I really, really like and there are some cards I'm like, yeah, I don't like this card at all. But let's now dive into his first 10 cards. Let's talk about print runs and then let's break down his first 10 cards. And at the same time, I have a list here from Kurt we're going to talk about his list compared to mine and our list match up very rarely um, when it comes to 10 all the way to 1. Now taking a look at Fuji's collection as a whole when it comes to his first 10 cards in his library. His very first card was Cal Ripken Jr., then Ted Williams. His third card was Mike Trout. His fifth card was Frank Thomas. And then his ninth card was Robinson. And his tenth card was Ken Griffey Jr. When you look at print runs... His Frank Thomas is his number one card, 22,911, right in the middle of the bubble. And then his second highest printed card is Mike Trout, 16,430. Recently, his Griffey, 3.5K, Jackie Robinson, 3.2K. And then his earlier cards, Cal Ripken Jr., Ted Williams, both printed 1,200 or below. Ripken, 1205, and then Williams at 1131. So when you add all those print runs together, he comes out just over 70,000 cards, 70,344, a full nearly 30,000 cards under one Griffey Shore. So just an amazing comparison that he put out 10 cards uh, and is not even close to one Griffey Shore. But when you rank his 10 cards out, what are my bottom four? In the bottom four, it's very straightforward. Don Mattingly, Frank Thomas, Dwight Gooden, and Mike Trout. Now, when it comes to Kurt in his bottom 10, he has Sandy Koufax, Jackie Robinson, Don Mattingly, and Dwight Gooden. The Mattingly and the Gooden are the only times our lists match up from here on out. Now, when it comes to those four cards, just some personal flavor here, some personal thoughts on the card. The Mattingly, I, you know, I was really starting to really like Fuji's designs. I was coming around to not having a face on the card. And then he put out the Mattingly. I get it, the, the New York Yankee pinstripe. But I was just kind of like, it just looks unfinished. And I know he said that he wanted to just put it out to put it out. But I just kind of felt the card just didn't flow with his other cards. On the Frank Thomas, this is the artist that should have done the no name on front variation. It has been done by many other artists as of right now. But at the moment, nobody had done it. And considering Fucci's uh, perspective on being anonymous, when you think of Frank Thomas's error rookie card, that is the perfect artist to have done this, and he did not. So I think it was an easy win that he passed on on this card. The Mike Trout, it's Mike Trout. I can live with it. I can live without it. It's not that big of a deal. I have no real personal affection towards the card. And then the Dwight Gooden, that just kind of fell in the bottom because it just kind of fell in the bottom. I mean, when you look at his other six cards, I like his other six cards. This one just kind of fell in the bottom. There's no real flavor or there's no real sort of opinion on the card other than it's just probably his seventh best card right now at the 50% mark. Now coming in number six on the list just outside the bottom four, 
For me personally, it is his Mark McGuire. And then for Kurt, it is the Ken Griffey Jr. On Kurt's list, I don't have any notes, so I don't know his perspective of why he put certain cards in certain spots. But for me, on the Mark McGuire, a couple things I really like about the card. Number one, the fans in the background on the top left are having so much fun in the card. I think it was a cool card in general. And then when you look at McGuire's collection overall, when you pair this card with the Keith Shore and then Natural, these three cards are gonna work very well together from a display perspective. Now coming in in the fifth spot, when it comes to these rankings, for me, it is going to be that Ken Griffey Jr. And then for Kurt, it is going to be the Mark McGuire. So we flip-flop these two cards. I'm probably going to say I put the Griffey fifth because I'm a Mariners fan. And who knows why Kurt put the McGuire fifth. But on the Griffey, a couple things I really, really liked. He was the first artist to do a pink background. I don't know why pink is a thing with Griffey all of a sudden, but it is. It's also why I wore this shirt today to pay homage to the card overall. In the fourth spot on this list, I have his Jackie Robinson and Kurt has Cal Ripken Jr. I really wish I knew why he put Ripken here, but on the Jackie Robinson, I thought this card was really good. This just falls down to number four because of his other three cards in my perspective. I can't wait to get this card in. It's gonna flow very well with this set because it's so different. It's not a red background. It just, I think, plays so well with other cards in Jackie Robinson's set. Now coming in, in the third spot, I have Ted Williams and Kurt has that Frank Thomas. So we are very opposite on the Frank Thomas when it comes to ranking since I put Frank Thomas in the bottom. But on the Ted Williams, this card, again, just like the Jackie Robinson, displays so well. It's on my shelf here to the left of me. I just really, really like this card. No issues at all with the card. No real improvements. Hope you're liking the video so far. And if you are, please check out my other Artist Series videos. We've spoken about Andrew Thiel. We've spoken about Ermsey. I had a really good one-hour interview with Blake Jameson a week ago. So check those out on my channel. And our most recent release was ranking Mr. Cartoon's top 10 cards in the set. Now, looking at his final two cards, in spot number two on Kurt, he has that Mike Trout. I'm really curious. I had, of course, Mike Trout in the bottom. Where did Mike Trout, or where does Mike Trout rank in your list? Is he in the top or is he in the bottom? I understand there is some controversy or some fans out there who did not like the pose change in this card, but as we're seeing more and more cards come out in Project 2020, cards are changing they're not staying true to the regular form and that's a cool thing i can just live without this card overall so that's the reason why it's in my bottom list but i'm curious where is mike trout in your list on fuji but coming in number two for me and this one was difficult almost made number three but when it comes to number two it is the cal ripkin and i just like the sort of boom behind Ripken. I, I just like the graphic. I like the look of it overall. It's a really, really great looking card. And then coming in right now at number one at the 50% mark for Kurt, he has that Ted Williams. So I was very happy to see Ted Williams make it to number one on his list. And then for me, look, no surprise, if you follow any of my videos and seen any of my commentary around this card, you know it's my favorite card of Fuchi's. It is the King of the Hill, Sandy Koufax. And I don't know why I think it's King of the Hill, but the moment I saw that card when it was released, my first thought was Hank Hill, King of the Hill. I'm from Texas. I like that show overall. And so for me right now, it's going to be very difficult to top that throughout his next 10 releases when it comes to Project 2020. But the Sandy Koufax, King of the Hill is my number one card at the moment. Hope you liked the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And at the same time, if you want to hear more news and notes from me around Project 2020, check out that plays on the screen right now.